This is our updated Filmora tutorial for beginners. We'll cover exactly how to use Filmora 12, including some cool new Filmora, video editing features and AI tools so you can get started with Wondershare Filmora 12 quickly and easily. While Filmora works on both Windows and Mac, I'm gonna be taking you through on a Mac, but the process is the same on Windows too. Okay, so this is the first thing you'll see when you open up Filmora 12. So any of the previous projects that you've been working on will be shown down the bottom here where it says recent projects. Over here is where you create a project and up here is where you would create a new project. But before you do that, you'd wanna set the aspect ratio of the type of video you'll be making, whether that's for social media, you might choose Instagram one by one or something similar. But today we're going to choose 16 by nine widescreen and then we're gonna click create new project. So this is the overall Filmora interface. Up in the top left corner here, we've got all our media area, which is all of our project files and all our video assets and things we're gonna use in our video. Next to that, we've got Filmora stock media. You'll also find that they'll have stock audio as well and stock music that you have access to. Next to audio, we've got the titles. We head to the next one, it is transitions and we we'll keep going. We've got effects over here. You've also got stickers, lots of things, lots of presets. They've also got full templates, which just have a few more moving parts and elements. You've also got some split screen options over here, which could use and add multiple different videos into those areas if you would like. But I'm just gonna leave this one back on the media tab for now. Um, this big black area over here, which you've already seen my template in, this is where we're gonna watch the magic unfold and preview our masterpiece as we edit. Down here, we've got our playback controls to play our video or stop our video. Move forward a frame or back a frame while we're editing. Then just over here, we can really maximize our playback. So we can enter full screen mode if we wish. We can adjust our overall volume. We can take a snapshot or a screenshot of our video as well. And we can even save out a JPEG from our video if we wanted to do that. And next, if we head down to this area, the timeline, just up the top, we've got a whole lot of different settings we can work with here. We can render a preview to our footage. We can add markers, which can be really cool indicators to just remind yourself where certain things are in the edit. You can record a voiceover over footage, use an audio mixer to really dial in, disable timeline snap, that means your playback head can just snap to the end of your clip. Again, I can show you how that works. Zoom to fit into timeline so you can see all your footage down here. And you've got a zoom in, zoom out function here where you can really get granular on what you're doing in your edit. Again, I'm gonna be showing you how all these work. This one's called a audio indicator. Now, I always like using this one and clicking that one to be on so you can see what your audio looks like as you're editing. So that just fits into that space nicely. And just before we do start, there is one other thing that we should do before we begin, and that is go up to file here, go to project settings, and you just wanna double check your project settings before you get started. We've got 16 by nine, we selected that earlier. If you did change your mind and you want to change it, you could do so here. Resolution is currently at 1920 by 1080 full HD. That is just fine, but again, if you wanted to do for your, some other custom resolution, you could do so. And the frame rate, this is also where you can choose your frame rates. I'm gonna leave it at 25 and your color space SDR is just fine for us. So we're gonna leave that all as is and hit okay. And the last thing I wanna show you before you get started in importing your footage is just the player here. You've got some quality options of how your video footage plays back. Now, if you've got a slower, older computer, it might be struggling with some of the footage you're bringing in. So I would recommend going at half quality or if it's really old and slow, go to quarter quality and your edit and your video will just play back a lot more smoothly. And I'm gonna keep that at full quality and we'll see how we go. We can always change it as we edit. Okay, so that's a quick overview of where everything is. Now we're gonna jump in and import all our video files. So we wanna come up here. I wanna make sure we're on my media and then I like to be on project media and then import, import media files. And then I'm just going to locate the shots I want. Now you can select just one clip at a time or you can hit shift and select the bottom clip and then get all of your clips to import at once. Great, now I've imported all my media. You can see that they appear here now. So once you've got all your files in, the next step is to import your primary footage into the editing timeline. So we're gonna grab our clip here, make sure one is selected, click and drag it down into our timeline down here. And I'm gonna just bring it right to the start. Now we've found a nice frame of me smiling and we've pulled our main footage down onto the timeline. We can start editing down our video. But you can see it on the bottom and now it actually gives us a preview of the video file in this section 
here to see what's going on. And it also gives you a bit of a snapshot of the audio waveforms. It's really cool to be able to see your waveforms because at a glance, you'll be able to easily remove the sections where you're not speaking and it's just a super fast way to edit. That is the next step then. Let's go through our footage remove any bad takes, any mistakes or anything that we don't want to have in our finished video. I'm going to zoom in and, and there's a couple of ways to do that even. You can head over to your slider here and that will zoom in or I like to use hotkey on my keyboard sometimes and I use command plus to zoom in or minus to zoom out. Let's just zoom in a little bit and then we can move around our timeline nice and easily and locate the section where we want to trim our clip up. Let's go ahead and tidy up my main footage here and edit out all the sections that we don't want. So if I just click and hold on the playback head here, I want to start right about here. Now, if I select my clip, there's a couple of different ways I can trim this. I can head to my scissors and click that and hit split and then select anything to the left and just hit delete and then it will trim my piece like so. I'm just going to hit mute and press the space bar to play and you can see that that is perfect. I'm just going to hit undo, command Z. Another way we can do it is we go to the very beginning of the clip and if I just hover the mouse at the very start of the clip, you can see here the icon has changed to this trim tool. So if I click and hold, I can simply trim to the start of my clip and find the space where I want to begin. I'm really happy with that. What you want to do now is just go through your video, scrub through and find all those sections where Perhaps I'm not speaking and there's a bit of a gap. Now, another way to do this same function of, of splitting clips or trimming clips is on the scissors here on your cursor. You can see that you can just click that and it will split it as well. So that's a really quick and easy way to cut up your clips. So now that our main piece of footage is cut into different sections, and as you can see here by the title, it says Tom PTC. That means there's three different clips now. If you wanted to, you could actually click and move them around now that they are individual clips. So if I just clicked on this middle piece, picked it up, I can move it to the end. And now we've got this big space in the middle. You could select that and hit delete and it will just move things around for you. I'll just back to where it was. So now that's done, the next step is to bring in any B-roll or overlay footage into our project to really make our edit more interesting and visually stimulating. I've got a couple of other clips up here in my project media. I'll select one of these. Let's go with this shot of me at sunset with a camera and I can literally just click and drag and bring it down to our timeline like so. So we've just pulled down our b-roll footage and that just sits on top like so. Let's put some more footage in. Let's put this nice beach shot down and now with this footage you will see that it actually has some audio waveforms which ideally we don't want on our b-roll footage because it will interfere with our main primary footage audio there so easy fix what we can do if you hover your mouse on this green line here you can literally bring it straight down to minus 59.97 volume which means you won't hear a thing don't worry about that. The other option is over here, you can mute that entire track by hitting mute and then that way none of your B-roll or nothing you bring in to this track will have volume. So that's another way to do it as well. I'm gonna zoom back out. I'm gonna butt that up against my other shot and I'm gonna to continue to bring in some of my footage. Now with these video pieces, they're just the same as any other video clips and like that primary footage I showed you before. You can click on it, you can move it around and you can play with it really easily. It's really user friendly I find in Filmora. And again, if you wanted to trim any of your B-roll shots, I'm just gonna zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. You can just trim it like so, you can cut it. And if you did wanna use this splitting feature, you want to make sure that your clip is selected. If none of the clips are selected and you clicked on it, it would cut everything in its path. So it's cut my main footage and it's cut the B-roll. I'm just gonna click undo. If you just wanna select your B-roll footage and hit split, it will just split that. Just be careful and be aware of which clip you have highlighted before splitting your clips. I'm just gonna go ahead, move my clips around and trim them up and make my edit look as amazing and visually appealing as possible. Okay, now we've got our primary footage down. We've got our B-roll layered on top. It's all looking great. The next step is to add in any text or titles to your video. So you can come up the top here to the titles button. And as you can see here, there's all these different templates. Lots of them are animated and lots of different options here to add text onto your edit. As you can see there, some really full on ones or some more simple ones and lots of different options there, which is really cool. 
Let's go with this one. And to add it to your timeline, you simply click and drag it on. And I'm just gonna hit Command Z there. Another way you can do it is see that little plus button? You can just hit that and that will go straight onto your clip as well. To customize your title, you just simply double click on it and it opens up this window here. And as you can see here, your title, you can change to whatever you would like and put my name in here. From there, you can resize both that animated part of the title or the text itself. You have to do them individually or the animated section itself. So I'm just gonna reposition this title just down here to where it fits in a little nicer. And it's really easy to customize and change around. You simply click on your preview window and just move it around and resize as you see fit. You can also do it by transforming it over in the section over here. You can see the scale slider. So I could move it around in there as well, which is really cool. And you can also change the position manually like that. But I find it's just really easy just to pick up and move around. And in fact, I'm gonna do that now because my text is getting a little lost in the background there. So if I move it to this side, it's looking much better. And I'm gonna move the animation over there as well. And that fits in really nicely. What I like to do whenever I make a change in my edit is just play it back and see how it looks. So I'm going to the start of my timeline. I'm gonna hit the space bar to play and have a look. Awesome, I love that, that's perfect. Now, while there's some great titles and graphics and things in here already built into Filmora, our number one place to create amazing looking graphics and titles and things for your videos is on Placeit. So if you're looking for something specific, you're not finding it in here, or you really wanna customize something up to make it look really professional and match your branding and the style of video that you're creating, then Placeit is our recommendation and an amazing resource. So go ahead now and add in all of your titles and text into your video. And I'm gonna hit okay, because I'm happy with my lower third title. Once you've got your titles in, it's time to add some transitions. Once again, in Filmora, there are lots of different transitions and they're located up here. As you can see, there's all these different templates and presets already built into Filmora. And if you click on them, it will show you what they look like. And just a hot tip, if you do wanna preview them, you do have to be selected on a clip that does butt into another clip, if that makes sense. When I select this clip, it thinks that I'm gonna transition into this next clip. Make sure that's selected so you can have an idea of what you're looking at in transitions. Now, we'll use these pretty sparingly when I'm working with clients in my video production company. I use these very sparingly, to be honest. I feel like sometimes it can cheapen the edit and a lot of the times just jump cuts from one clip to the next is enough. Occasionally, I might use a dissolve or something like that. Or if it is a really high energy edit, then that's when I would start to use transitions. So, you know, have fun but don't go over the top and really consider what the project is you're working on and is it suitable for the type of project you're working on. For the sake of this tutorial, I am going to have a bit of fun and I'm going to use this paper plane transition. So if I want to use it, I simply select it and hit the plus and it's going to go on to the next available clip. So I'm gonna once again, hit play and just have a look at it. It actually works really well. And if I wanted to use a different transition for this next cut, I select that clip and then I find another one. I'm gonna select this one this time. It's going to give me a nice little preview and I feel like that works pretty well. So I'm gonna hit plus and it's saying there's no extra media. So that is one thing to consider when you are putting in your transitions, you have to have enough media, enough frames on your clip to allow for the transition. So in this instance, it's saying there is not. Okay, I've moved it around so that there's more to work with in that clip. Let's play it back and see what it looks like. I love that. That's working really well. Another really great hot tip is if you feel like the transition length is too long, you can simply select it on your timeline and you can make it longer or you can make it shorter. It's really easy just to move it around. To be honest, most of my transitions are usually around 12 frames, but you can really customize it and make it however long you like. Now, when we're working with our primary footage here and perhaps we've got a split in the clip because it was a bad take, you wouldn't put a transition in there. I'll just show you what that looks like. If I click and drag it into that section, you're cutting from one clip to the same clip and that doesn't really work. What you could do to change up the shot is make the second shot a little larger and that just changes up the camera angle nicely and it looks like a different camera or the camera's punched in and it just changes up the shot and keeps things interesting and if you have made a mistake, it will hide that wonderfully. 
So I've selected this second clip here. I've double clicked on it and just here I can just make the scale larger and bring it up. And again, I can just click and drag it down. You always want a little bit of headroom when there's a talking head like that. You don't want the head chopped off. You just want to bring it down just a touch and make sure that my head's in a similar position as the previous shots. Again, let's play it back and have a look. I've moved myself up a little bit too high, just bring myself down a little bit. So that's one way to change up your shot is just to make a split and zoom in on that second frame just to change up the dynamic of the shot. I'll hit OK there and what you want to do is go through your entire edit and just see if there's any spaces where you can add in transitions or zoom in on any of your piece to camera clips to change up your edit. The next step then is adding in any music into your video. Now there is audio tracks up here in Filmora. If we go to audio, they do have some different tracks there to choose from. Depending on the license or the subscription that you've got, these might be okay to use. But the top two places I recommend you go to get your music for your videos is Artlist and Epidemic Sound. Both of those make the whole licensing thing really, really simple so that you know you're not gonna get caught out with some of those annoying copyright claim or copyright strikes for having the wrong license for the music in your videos. I'm gonna go back over to the media tab here and I'm going to track down my own music that I've sourced from Artlist in this case. Okay, so it's imported our music over here and just like our video clips, we can either click and just drag it on like so, or we can hit this plus button and it will put it straight in like so. Now, as you can see, our music is overhanging all the way past my last clip here, which we don't want. We don't want the music to continue on after we want it to finish at the end of our video clip. So there's a couple of things I could do. I could simply click on the end of my music track and drag it to the end like so. What I find is on music tracks, they've always composed a really nice fade out of the song. I'm gonna play a little bit more so you can really hear that. Nice. So I actually want that part of the song to be finishing at the end of my video clip. So what I'm going to do is trim the beginning of the music track. It doesn't have to be perfect at this stage, just trim it a fair bit so that you can then click on your music track, slide it to the left until that outro piece is matching up to the end of my clip. And that is just a really smooth way to mix your audio when you're editing. So make sure the end of the music track is at the end of your edit. That is just a really cool way to do it. And then of course you've got no music here. So you wanna click and drag that to the beginning. Now the problem there is you've got your music track starting at a random part of the song at the start of your edit and it's gonna sound a bit clunky. I'm gonna play a bit for you so you can properly understand that. Okay, a few things wrong with that. It's too loud, it's coming in really abruptly and we wanna fix all that. Let me show you how. You simply option click on the volume line of your audio track and it will create a keyframe and it will bring you to these settings right here. As you can see, you can adjust your volume in here and we wanna keep that around minus 25 all the way to minus 30. This is something that you really wanna do with headphones on and just play back and check as you go, but somewhere around minus 26 to minus 30 is a good place for your soundtrack. And then we wanna put a little fade in on. Anywhere around one second is a nice subtle fade in for your audio track. So I'm gonna hit okay, I'm gonna play that back and have a little listen. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get- Excellent, that is so subtle, it's so nice, you barely notice it, but you can hear a bit of music there in the background. So I'm really happy with that. So now we wanna work with our main audio on our main footage here. And again, we can click on the slide, audio slider here and just move it up and down. Now you want this volume generally around minus five decibels. If I have it somewhere around there, we can play it and then we can see how it is looking in our meter over to the side. Let's have a look. Ideally, it's peaking between minus 12 and minus six. I'm actually going to lift that up a little higher so that I can have another look back. It's to listen and engage. Excellent. That is exactly where I want it. Just a reminder, it is super important not to have your audio peaking too loud. Over in here in your audio meter in the bottom right corner, if it's hitting the red zone, that's no good. You don't want that. Another way you can adjust your audio on these clips is to double click on the clip itself and you can adjust it with the slider here. This also gives you some options to change the sound balance. So it's coming out a left speaker or a right speaker. I generally like to have that right in the middle so it's nice and balanced. You can fade in, fade out. So fade in will 
as you can see in the top left here on the track, it's gonna fade in my fade in my main audio. You can do the same to fade it out. And you've got all these other different audio manipulation options here, pitch, audio ducking, equalizer, denoise. If you wanna remove any background noise, you can do so. It can be really handy to have some of these options available to you, especially if you've got a dodgy mic or you're out filming in the wind. And we're gonna hit okay there because we're happy. Now, another thing is if you wanted to adjust all your audio at the same time, you click and shift click on all your different clips with audio like so along your timeline. And then you right click and hit adjust audio. Or photo shoot. Avoid some of the many pitfalls. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get kids to listen. There you go, really important to get your audio right and to play it back as you go through just to make sure it's mixed correctly and you're really happy with how it is sounding. From there, the next step is to adjust any colors or to tweak the color grade of your video. What we wanna do is come back to this first clip where I'm looking super excited. We wanna make sure that clip is indeed selected. And then we're gonna come up to our edit panel here. We click on that and then we want to make sure that we're in the color tab up here. And so in this section, this is where we can change all our colors and make our primary footage or any footage that you choose to look as great as it can be in terms of brightness, contrast, temperature, all of those great things that can make your shot look fantastic. In here, we do have a heap of presets. If I click on some of these, you can see that it applies like an Instagram filter, there's Batman. If it suits your video, then go ahead, go for it. But I personally like to do it a little bit more manually, get a little bit more granular with my color correction. If you're like me and you wanna do that, then you keep scrolling down and you can play with these dials here. So first up, we've got temperature. We can make it a little bit cooler or we can make it warmer. And I think I will make it a little bit cooler. You can play with the tint. Be careful with this one. It can throw the colors out. So generally I like to keep that at zero. Exposure, if your shot needs to be a little bit brighter, you can do so by playing around with that. Again, be careful, you don't want any huge hot spots happening. Brightness, again, that's gonna bring up all those bright spots of your shot. Play with caution. Contrast, I think I could bring mine up a little bit. It's looking a little washed out. That's looking better already. Vibrant saturation, if you wanna bring a bit more color into your shot, you can do that as well. Highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. Vignette, you can play around with that, but I find that to be a little bit old school and I don't really use that. But there's all these different dials there which you can play with and I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna leave it like that. There's some other color options here which are a little bit more advanced. This one deals with the hue, saturation and luminance of your shot. It can be dangerous. Again, be careful. It's gonna play with just the yellows, greens, blues, the different colors of your shot. Go ahead, try it out if you like, but you don't wanna go over the top with any of these more advanced features. But once you're happy, you've dialed in the colors and the contrast and everything like that for your shot, you can either hit okay and that will just save it to that clip. But what I recommend, especially if you wanna copy that same color layout to all of your other shots that are very similar, you go up here and save as custom. And I'm gonna to say Tom PTC, which means Tom piece to camera color preset. And I'm gonna hit okay. And now that's saved, click okay. So now that we're really happy with the color correction on this first clip, we can simply right click on it. We can say copy effects, and then we can select all our other clips here, right click on those, paste effects, and now they are all color corrected as well. I'm just gonna hit undo here and show you one other way you can do it. You can also click on the next clip along, right click on it and hit color match. And then over in your preview window, it will show you the reference image, the first one that we've worked on, and then the current one. And if you just hit match, it will change it like so. So what you wanna do now is go through and tweak all the colors of any of your clips where it's required, including your B-roll or your overlay footage too. And then once that's done, it's time to export your video file. You can just come up to this export button, top right of screen, click on that, and then it'll bring you to this window. So in here, you've got a whole lot of different options. So let's just start at the very beginning. You want to change the name of your video. Let's call it My Filmora Tutorial and you put it in a nice spot where you're going to remember. Put it in my primal folder here, and I actually like to create a folder called exports. So I'm gonna put it in there. Preset, you wanna match this to the project settings, that's gonna work great. And then for the format, as you can see, you've got a whole lot of different options here, but your best options are gonna be MOV or MP4. I love an MP4, so I'm gonna click that one. 
Here you can see you've got different quality options. Higher just means it's going to take longer to export. It's got a recommended option. I'm gonna go higher because I want the best quality video possible. A resolution, that is the resolution we were working with. So that's perfect. 25 frames is great. And you've got options here to upload to the cloud and also an option here to enable hardware acceleration for video encoding. Sounds technical, sounds great, I want it. So I'm gonna leave it selected. And now I'm gonna hit export. Before I do, you can also see just how long your clip goes for and the estimated size of the output of your clip. Let's go ahead and hit export. As you can see, once I hit export, this window has popped up and I have been editing on the free version. Look, I don't recommend going with the free version because you're going to have that big fat watermark sitting on your vision and nobody wants that. For the paid plans, you do have the option to remove watermarks, 100,000 high quality resources, speech to text, text to speech, keyframes, supporting 4K, speed ramping, and you're going to have access to all the presets. So as you can see, there's a few different plan options. You've got the annual plan for $49.99 a year, cross-platform plan for $59.99 a year, or the perpetual plan for $79.99 a year. Obviously, the more expensive, the more features you're gonna have access to. So some really cool options there. And honestly, as a professional video editor myself, I feel like this is a really good editing program for the price, and I would consider using it. And if you don't want that watermark on, then you would look to buy one of those plans. Once your video is exported, I definitely recommend you playing it back, having a final check, making sure that MP4 or that MOV file that you've exported out is looking exactly and sounding exactly how you would like. If there is any errors, you may need to go back into Filmora and just tidy that up and re-export. But if you are happy, then you can go ahead and upload it to YouTube or wherever you want your video to go. That's a complete editing tutorial using Filmora 12. I hope you enjoyed. Now that you know how to edit in Filmora, linked on screen is our free PDF video editing guide that you can download, print out and follow along with when you're editing your own videos to help you edit in the most efficient way with minimal waste of time or rework. As always, there's also a bunch of tools and resources linked in the description box below to help you with your video creation. And I'd love you to follow along my own YouTube channel as well. That's Tom.Rawlins. I take you behind the scenes and show you what I do in my own video production day to day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.